Welcome to News Click. Hindustan Aeronautics Limited has been lately in news for all the wrong reasons. Ministers, officials, Indian Air Force officers have all been thrashing Hindustan Aeronautics Limited for one or the other reason. But the story that has emerged finds one thing where they, which is noticeably absent, which is that the response of Hindustan Aeronautic Limited, its officials or its employees, is not finding much space in corporate media. So today we have, uh, we'll be talking with Raghunandan, D. Raghunandan, who's a, our defense expert, uh, happens to be an uh, aeronautics engineer who has had experience of having worked in Hindustan Aeronautics Limited to, to, to explain many of the questions that come to our mind when this debate has been raging, which, which has been, th I mean, which uh, thrams Hindustan Aeronautics Limited for a variety of reasons. Uh, welcome, Raghu. Raghu, let me ask you, as an aeronautics engineer, as a former employee of Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, how do you respond to all the criticisms that are coming out against HAL and the silence, more or less, not the silence, but deliberate downplaying of HAL's side of the story? Two aspects I'd like to touch on. The first is that all this negative narrative about HAL has come up now against the backdrop of the Rafale deal and is being used, I believe, deliberately by the government to uh, make a scapegoat of HAL mm. and use that scapegoating to justify their decision to buy 36 fighter aircraft outright from the salt rather than stay with the original uh, contract of buying, uh, of uh, having a deal for 126 fighters of which 18 would have been bought out and 108 would have been made in India in HAL. The new deal now scraps that 108 and goes for outright purchase. And the reason being advanced is, well, you know, HAL's quality is not good. Their delivery to time would not have been good. They couldn't agree on guarantee between them and Dasso. They couldn't agree on time scheduling, etc., etc. Uh, I believe this is all scapegoating uh, for reasons which we'll come to, uh, I'm sure. But to begin with, I just want to say that I think in the context of the Rafale deal, bringing up these negative things about HAL are, to my mind, nothing but scapegoating. Because if the government had felt that in the it's a uh, deal between the government which is the buyer and that's all which is the seller mm. with HAL being a contractor on behalf of the government of India mm. to manufacture 108 aircraft in India if government had felt that there were deficiencies on the part of HAL would not the government have uh, should not the government have been doing something to rectify those deficiencies? If you are now saying we can't rectify those deficiencies, shut down HAL. What is HAL doing then? If you think HAL cannot handle this contract, after handling numerous licensed productions over the past 70 years uh, in India, what is HAL doing at all? So to my mind, this is a very deliberate attempt at scapegoating HAL and to pave the way for privatization of uh, defense aerospace manufacturing. Ah, but Raghu, country. when you have, say, um, a retired Air Force officer, the stature of Air Chief Marshal S. Krishna Swami, writing and talking about that the uh, estimated man hour rates that HAL quoted for Rafal was 2.7 times that of, of uh, or other officers point out that HAL up to 70s did a commendable job, but after that, some kind of a decline set in. 
they also point to the fact that the, the, more than 1,100 aircrafts have crashed, once produced by, uh, by HAL have crashed. One of the principal reasons are technical, which have to do with the quality of, of the produce, and others by bird hits or human errors. Um, when such allegations and coming from such high authority, I mean, people who have enjoyed, who have been bought, um, uh, the, the chief of, of Indian Air Force, uh, what is a common person to make of it? So uh, that was the second part of your question in your introductory uh, mm. remarks, which is why is it that the HAL side of the story is not yes. gaining salience? Uh, I believe there are two factors involved with this. The um, story from the HAL point of view who is going to put forward that story? It's either employees of HAL. The chairman of HAL has already clarified on many of the issues you have raising, but that will be seen in the present context of, oh, well, this is vested interest. What else is the chairman of HAL going to say except to defend? Uh, there have also been a number of senior Air Force officials who've spoken out on behalf of HAL, unfortunately, their voice has not gained uh, prominence in the media, primarily because I think the idea that Indian public sector undertakings uh, have a poor record, uh, are not performing up to the mark, uh, has gained uh, credence in you recent it's times. It's more ideological than anything. And the idea that private sector should be given a chance to emerge, particularly in defense sector, has gained enormous traction in the corporate media. However, those who know the subject technically would know that the private sector has shown no uh, capacity, tendency to acquire that capacity for precision manufacture in almost any industrial manufacturing sector leave alone uh, aerospace. But I'll come back to the other question. Uh, there have long been grievances expressed by sections of the Indian Air Force regarding performance of HAL mm. in terms of manufacture, overall and servicing of aircraft, timely deliveries, and so on. But two things I think require to be understood. The first is the specific issue that you raised about man hours. Yes, HAL will take more man hours than Dassault to manufacture. And if you were to do a comparison, you will find that the number of man hours taken by Dassault are more than the number of man hours taken by Lockheed Martin in the US or Boeing uh, in the US because this is primarily to do with the amount of investment in equipment and machinery that a company brings to bear. Now, a large company with huge turnover of manufacture of aircraft like Lockheed Martin or Boeing's would invest a lot more, would have more advanced equipment, and therefore their productivity in manufacture would be that much uh, higher. It is uh, common sense to know that HAL's infrastructure, manufacturing capability, equipment, machinery will not be as advanced as those of uh, France or the UK and even less than that of the United States. Therefore, this is part of the process of learning and acquiring capability uh, of an industry in India compared to industries uh, abroad. No industry in India has started off by being equal productivity to productivity of Britain or Germany or France or the US. Steel companies in India in terms of productivity mm. have not yet reached those levels and are coming close to European levels in terms of energy consumption, uh, for example. It has taken us over 60 years to do it. And even now, 
many of these technologies are being acquired from abroad rather than being developed uh, from within. It wouldn't be surprising to see this happening in an advanced manufacturing industry like uh, aviation. I'll give you an example. I have worked in Rolls-Royce Aero Engines Limited in the UK. And as you know, Rolls-Royce Aero Engines outside of the United States is the major aero engine manufacturer in the world. And there are not many countries which have that capability, even those who make aircraft. In Rolls-Royce, I remember way back 40 years ago, they had acquired numerically controlled machines to manufacture turbine blades, uh, etc. Highly precision uh, manufactured components of aero engines. Rolls-Royce had two of these engines, each costing in those days half a million pounds. Pratt & Whitney, the US competitor, had 40 such machines at that time. You can imagine. And it was not too long after that, that Rolls-Royce in trying to do R&D in developing a new model engine actually went bankrupt because it could not sustain heavy expenditure on R&D and heavy expenditure on manufacture and compete with their American counterparts. Just to give you an idea, this is not a simple uh, equation to suddenly say HAL does not have the productivity of Dassault. That's but not surely news. it doesn't mean that there are no problems with HAL. Exactly. Exactly. So let me come to that. There are problems. I believe HAL has over the years mm. developed and not corrected a variety of problems in low productivity, poor quality uh, assurance, poor uh, timekeeping in terms of delivery uh, schedules and overall uh, a weak work culture and not much has been done to rectify this situation. I have been writing about this for over 20 years in fact that we don't have these problems in our uh, atomic energy establishment. We don't have these problems in our space uh, establishment. Why is it that we continue to have this in our defense manufacturing establishment, particularly in HAL? because we have not developed the systems mm. which space and atomic energy have, which is a tight control over uh, the entire process, which is internal development and training and capacity building of human resources and active backing of the political leadership and full support mm. uh, of them. I believe this needed to be developed and you may be aware that in the defense ministry, we have got a junior minister for defense. The brief for the junior minister has always been that this junior minister, the minister of state, is supposed to be responsible for the defense public sector undertakings. I don't think anybody in the public or in the commentariat or defense analysts in newspapers have asked the question over the past several decades, what has this Minister of State for Defense production been doing? There is no supervision from the political leadership. There is no guidance from the political leadership. There is no discussion about fresh investment plans, improvement in work culture. On, uh, yeah, you're right because they have now told all the public sector, defense public sector units that the, you have to raise money from the market because the government is not going to fund you. Uh, my last question to you for today, uh, Raghu, is that uh, should one compare the life cycle costs of goods that are bought off the shelf with the price that we will have to pay to build up our indigenous capability? I mean, when we buy uh, an aircraft like Rafale, now, the life cycle costs of, of Rafale, uh, that means for 35, 40 years, the spares, uh, is something that we, ne do we take that into account when, when, when we are calculating costs and comparing it with the costs of building our own indigenous capability? Again, there are two aspects to this. One is, you're right, 
one should not be looking purely at uh, rupees and uh, euros in looking at benefits to the nation of having an indigenous mm. uh, capability. You will never have the same control over your uh, armaments if they continue to be imported, whatever the stocks you have. Tomorrow, if there are conflict situations, who is to say whether we will continue to have those spares, whether serviceability will continue to be high, what will we do in the eventuality of a choking of uh, supplies. These are factors which during conflict go beyond your control and that is when you need them the most. Uh, and that is why all major uh, countries have their own domestic uh, armaments manufacturing uh, setups rather than being reliant on uh, foreign partners, however close uh, they may be. The second part of it is life cycle maintenance and costs are, as I said, firstly always better served with a indigenous infrastructure mm -hmm. and uh, capability and in terms of costs will always pay back mm -hmm. in the longer run. The longer you go, the more the payback uh, will be. I believe that the current uh, arguments being given in favor of Rafal may or may not be genuine arguments which the government or sections of the Air Force uh, believe. By some means, you have to justify this Rafal deal that the government has got into. So you're looking for reasons. And in the course of those reasons, you have chosen to catch hold of HAL as the scapegoat and put the blame uh, on them. But I believe there is a great disservice being done to the nation. If you follow this logic, India ought to be importing all the equipment in the world. Because this is an argument which middle classes in India have been making for years. Whenever import substitution was talked about, when taxation and tariffs were talked about, the Indian middle class has always said foreign is better. The West is the best. Mm. And if in the first decade or two of the 21st century, India which aspires to be a world leader continued to sing the same song, I think it's a great pity. Thank you, Raghu, for today. Thank you for watching News Click. Uh, please send us your feedback. We would appreciate if you do that. And keep watching News Click.